Welcome to the Ute Originals training module, M3A, Reporting Process for Users. The target audience for this training module are national competent authorities, marketing authorization holders, sponsors of clinical trials, research institutions and academia. The learning objectives for this module are to be able to understand the Eugevisions Gateway, the types of Eugevisions users, gateway organisations, web post function users, and web trader EV web users. The Eugevisions Gateway is a hub that connects marketing authorisation holders, commercial and non commercial sponsors, and national content authorities together. All safety and acknowledgement messages are rerouted by the gateway to the appropriate receiver specified in the messages being exchanged. When a successful connection has been established, safety and acknowledgement messages can be successfully transferred among all the business partners connected to the gateway. The gateway provides secure messaging through privacy, authentication, integrity and non-repudiation of all transactions carried out through the gateway. The data being exchanged are encrypted and the messages are rerouted through the system. The Eugevigilance Gateway uses two protocols. The first, AS1, is an email based protocol and AS2 is an HTTP based protocol and is the preferred transmission protocol to be used in the gateway. When preparing for E2B R3, it should be noted that the EU implementation guide for E2B R3 allows the files to be up to 20 megabytes in size. The current E2B R2 files are not normally greater than 2 megabytes. This means that organizations currently using AS1 will need to ensure that their email servers used by their gateway allow for these larger files to be exchanged. As the emails used in AS1 include headers and routing information in addition to the XML attachment, it is recommended to set the email maximum size to at least 25 megabytes to allow for this. Organizations using the AS2 protocol should not be affected by these increases in file size. Configuring the gateway for E2B R3 is also required. The gateway settings used to identify the gateway trading partners are provided below. Depending on your software, you will need to use either the direct path or the relative path to be able to identify the sender and receiver IDs within the E2B R3 messages. The web trader function is an integral part of the Eugevigilance gateway that supports the secure electronic transmission of safety and acknowledgement messages, allowing organisations without an automated local gateway solution to send and receive safety and acknowledgement messages through the use of an internet browser that connects to the Eugevigilance system security. There are two forms of the web trader available. These are the EV post function, which is for sending complete XML files generated by the sender's local pharmacovision system, and EV web, which is for creating ICH ISSR messages through the use of an EV web application and the sending of the files generated through the web trader outbox. The web trader functions are available through the EV web application. There is an inbox which contains all the safety and acknowledgement messages that other organisations have been sent to that web trader. All the messages received will be displayed in the inbox. The outbox displays all the messages that that web trader has sent to other organisations. This includes safety messages and acknowledgement messages. The prerequisites for a gateway trader are that they can be able to create E2B R2 or R3 XML files from their own PharmaCovision's database. In addition, they have to have an SG compliant automated gateway software solution for being able to exchange the ICSR and acknowledgement messages with the Eugevision's gateway. 
Gateway traders will have access to the user visions via EVWeb, but they cannot use it to send ICSRs or acknowledgement messages using the EVWeb tool. Gateway traders can also submit product messages using the EV post function or through using their own automated gateway. All submissions to the gateway are checked to ensure that they are valid XML E2B R2 or E2B R3 files. Invalid XML files or non XML files are rejected and not processed any further. The Utivision system will return an E2B R3 acknowledgement with the error code AR for these invalid XML files or non XML files received by the gateway. This includes E2B R2 files. Organizations should note that using EV Web and EV Post that they will not be able to make an invalid submission that could result in a error AR acknowledgement being returned. After the gateway level validation, valid XML file submissions sent to Utivisions will go through business rule checks to ensure that the data content of the files meet the EU requirements for a valid submission. An E2B R2 acknowledgement will be returned for E2B R2 ICSRs and likewise an E2B R3 acknowledgement will be returned for E2B R3 ICSRs. However, organisations should note that uh, it is permitted to return either E2B R2 or E2B R3 acknowledgements for ICSRs received in either of the E2B formats. Therefore, when sending to other organisations apart from new divisions, you will need to be able to process both acknowledgement formats to ensure that your systems will be able to process whatever is returned from your uh, exchange. The EU backwards forwards conversion tool can assist with this because it can also convert acknowledgement files between the two formats. In order for organisations sending ETBR2 ICSRs to be able to process the ETBR3 acknowledgement, configuration changes will be needed to be made to the sender's gateway. If changes are to be made to the organization's gateway, some communication testing with EVTest, also known as XCOMP, is strongly encouraged. This should be conducted between June 2017 and October 2017 in order to give time to resolve any issues encountered. Full QAT testing is not required for gateway communication testing. If any issues are encountered during your testing, please contact the EMA service desk. The prerequisite for post function users is that they can create XML ICSRs from their E2B compliant file commissions database. They don't have an automated gateway solution and the post function users can send these XML ICSRs and acknowledgements using the post function that's built into EV Web. They can receive ICSRs and the acknowledgements back through the web trader in EV Web. The post function is fully integrated into the EV Web application. It allows E2BR2 or E2BR3 XML files to be sent to Utrivigens or other organizations connected to the Utrivigens gateway. The post function will prevent XML files being sent if they are invalid or contained invalid message receiver or sender ID does not match the organization that is being logged on at that point in time. It will not however print submissions that do not meet the Utrivigens business rules. EVWeb is an interactive tool that allows the manual creation of E2BR3 safety messages and either E2BR2 or E2BR3 acknowledgements can be created using the web browser. It is specifically designed for small and medium sized enterprise organisations and non-commercial sponsors which do not have a fully ICH E2BR2 or R3 compliant farm commission system. 
This diagram shows the connection of organisations to the gateway. All organisations, regardless of whether they're gateway traders or web traders, uh, can communicate with any of the parties connected to the central hub. So a file being sent out from the EV web trader is directed to the intended recipient of that file. This table summarises what type of user your organisation will be. If you have a S3 compliant gateway and are able to produce E2BR2 or E2BR3 files, the user type will be Gateway Trader. If you are able to produce R2 or R3 files but don't have an S3 compliant gateway, the user type will be Web Trader Post Function. If you have neither of these capabilities, then EV Web uh, will be the user type. So in this training course, we have learnt about the Eutrovigence Gateway, Eutrovigence User Types, Gateway Organisations, and the Web Trader Post Functionality Users, and the Web Trader EV Web Users. Please provide us with any feedback on this e-learning module by taking the EMA training survey. A link is provided on this page.